Today we're going to go over my exercises, or at least the weightlifting part of it. I do a row machine, sometimes I do jazzercise, I like yoga for stretching and muscle building, and I use the treadmill five days a week. The treadmill is for cardio and movement and training myself to do longer distances and an incline. The row machine is to help me when I'm kayaking. Jazzercise is also for cardio. But today I want to specifically go over the weightlifting part because as we age, it is harder for us to build muscle and keep muscle, especially as women. Muscle is also really helpful when trying to maintain a weight. When I hit my body fat percentage goal and I want to maintain, muscles are going to allow me to have an easier time doing that. So first things first, I'm going to hop on the treadmill, go two miles at whatever speed I need to. I'm hoping it will be an alternation between an incline of two, where I'm going a 3.2 speed, and then decreasing that and going a 3.4 speed, alternating around every five minutes, maybe 10. So let's see how I do today. Sweaty Michelle. Uh, okay, Ooh, maybe down more so I can show you guys the exercises. I am doing Derby's Forever Young workout program. I, I don't know what else to call it. I'm a little tired right now. I will put a link in the description box below. I'm not sponsored. I have like 150 subscribers. There's no way in hell I'm sponsored. I just like the program because they have a lot to choose from and they show what their workout program works on your body. Uh, they don't show the individual exercises though, which I find to be an issue. That's the only thing that I would say is a drawback is they give you different sets of exercises and they show what the complete workout works out, which is nice when you're trying to pick out a workout program. But I would also like each individual one showing me what that works out. I've had two severe injuries on one of my legs. I don't have the greatest catch system. I had to alter one of the exercises because it didn't work for my pre-existing condition. And it would have been easier to figure out which exercise and where I could alter it. And if I really cared about that muscle being worked out, if I'm doing it correctly, if they showed each individual muscle on each individual exercise. But that's the only, that's the only drawback I have. It's free, it's easy to get to, you can scroll around. Plenty of different exercise programs. And since I'm on the subject of having to alter one of my exercises, because I have a pre-existing condition, I want to make special note here that if you do have one, maybe you're dealing with certain body pains, neurological, physical, forever, currently healing, all that stuff, doctor, personal trainer, physical therapist, don't get your exercise programs from me or off an internet. I think the best way to do that is to talk to someone who specializes in it. Like I'm altering an exercise, maybe I wouldn't have to if I built up other muscles and it wouldn't affect me differently because my knee is bad. I put a lot of pressure on my back on one of the exercises to kind of make up for it. And then it ends up hurting my back. If I had someone to talk to about maybe correcting my posture or what I could do better on that, uh, maybe it wouldn't be affecting it. So these are just exercises for someone who isn't having to deal with existing conditions or, or knows how to alter the exercises to suit them. That being said, I do believe the average able-bodied person can do these, which is why I'm showing you them now and telling you what muscles they work out. I am using eight pound weights. I started at three pounds. I have built up muscle. I can do eight pounds comfortably, not super duper comfortably. It does start to get really sore, but that is good. This program calls for three sets of 14 on each limb. So 28 punches, and then I go through all my exercises, and then I do 28 more. Once again, and then 28 more. So these are called body punch workouts. And it's just as simple as that one, two, three, four, etc. This works out the triceps, the deltoids, and the shoulder muscles. All right, so next we have the alternating bicep curl. Nice and slow, we want those muscles to be worked. This works the biceps, the shoulders, and the triceps as well as building core stability. Uh, it can also increase grip because you are having to grip onto that sucker so it doesn't just flip out of your hands. And I have injured my hand because of a leg injury, had me falling down the stairs a lot. So I have one hand that does not grip particularly well. 
have to use like a little gripper exercise thing. I make sure to do that like once a week, but this also helps. So this is the one that I have to alter. It's called the bent over row. The bent over row, you are supposed to have your legs bent and not chicken winging out your arms, bringing it back. And this, because my knee here is bad, I have to go like that, which hurts my back a little bit more. So I, I don't do it exactly correctly. Uh, this is supposed to help that wing muscle in your back. This also helps with your middle and lower trapezoids, the rhomboids, and the posterior deltoids, if you're doing it the way it's supposed to be done. All right, next, these are goblet squats, and you want your weights up at your chest. Nice, good feet apart, and down you go. You don't want to be going like this. You want to try and keep it straight up back as possible while you're bending down. Surprisingly, this doesn't actually hurt my knee. It's been helping heal it, give it more strength. I've been noticing a good change on my ability to, to squat over time. And goblet squats are known to help your squat technique and your range of motion. So it does make sense that these would be helping me. I do 14 of these because it is working out both legs at the same time. So I don't have to do 28. These are going to work a whole plethora of muscles here. We've got our calves, our glutes, quadriceps, core and hamstrings. And last but not least on my set, just some calf raises. I don't want to do them fast. I want them to be working the muscles. So I try and go up as slow as possible and down as slow as possible. So calf raises are going to work your gastrocnemius. And that muscle is this rounded part of your calf right here. And then there's the soleus and it goes down to the lower of your calf. Salius, soleus. And again, there's more muscles. I think for each one of these, I'm just gonna pop up an image too, so that you guys can see what they show on the internet as being worked, <laughs> instead of me just trying to describe it all. <laughs> I'm gonna finish my next two sets, and then I'll see you guys in the weight room. So I do do all of my weightlifting in one day, two times a week. It just helps me keep the schedule up, and I do try and work out every muscle pretty, pretty good. <laughs> I give almost all the muscles all the attention that I can handle in a day. I like to start out with the overhead press. I am doing this alone, so I do have a set amount that I like to do. I have a set amount of weight I like to put on it, but if I'm feeling a little bit extra tired on a certain day, I will decrease it. I have 10 pounders, 15 pounders, five pounders, and 25 pounders because Steven works out and this is why we got it. It wasn't even in my plan to do this, but since he had it, I was like, yeah, let's try. <laughs> But if I need to stop a set, I will. Because I'm a nervous person, I very much listen to what my body is telling me in the moment with weights and lifting them above my body. <laughs> I'm gonna put 10 pounds on each side. The barbell weighs 45 pounds. So I'm doing an overhead press with 65 pounds total. This is going to build muscle in the chest, the shoulders, the arms, and upper back. So with these, you want your core engaged. You want your knees and hips locked. You want your back as straight as possible and you want to tilt your head back when bringing it down. I have hit my nose because I wasn't bringing my head back and I wasn't paying attention. Pay attention, bring your head back. Also, make sure you're securing them in place. This is something I had to build up to. I started out with no, no weights. Then I put five pounders on and I also increased my sets. I do two sets of 10. Sometimes I have to break that up into four sets of five but 20 total, and I think I started out at five. So walk, don't run when lifting weights. All right, and there are lines, oh, I'll show you guys. There's these lines right here. I center my hand right on it, and then I'm ready to lift. One set down. I'm gonna go through my whole routine and then do the sets over again. It's annoying to have to reset all this up, but better safe then sorry and lazy. Uh, another option is, is that I could just, you know, wait until I feel ready, but I like to keep the momentum going. Ooh. So because I'm a shorty, I have to bring these down for my next exercise, which is going to be a chest press. I had a very hard time remembering this when I first started doing this. For some reason, I would go to lay down and it would be like, oh, I can't even reach those. So. Once you get in a rhythm routine, it gets a lot easier. So a chest press is going to work the pectorials major. 
the deltoids, the triceps, and the biceps. It basically works the chest, shoulders, and arms. This one is, this one is the hardest one for me. I just recently moved up to the 10 pounders on these guys and I do have to take it slow and do four sets of five. So because I am a shorty, fair warning, I will not be laying flat. I put my feet on there for a little extra grippy. I just don't like my feet dangling. When starting out with this, make sure you're laying flat, you're centered, which I am not. So reconvene a little, there we go. I want my eyes to line up with this barbell so I kind of reposition. Uh, there's also this line on here. You want your back to be flat. Do not be in that little center. You don't want to, you want to make sure your back is laying correctly because you could hurt it. So let's see if I can get centered good here. All right, that's where we want it. My eyes are lined up. My hands are lined up. Right and go. Right. I'm going to take a little break and come back to it. Okay, that was about a minute break. I'm gonna do my other set of five, because again, I cycle through the whole thing and I do the reset up. <laughs> Some people may find that really annoying. I just need that to, I just need to be working other muscles. I can't, I, I'm not a very patient person when it comes to sitting and waiting for my, my muscles to regroup. All right, that set's done. All right, so next, I'm gonna take these 10 pounders off the barbell, put them on there. Okay, so these are called leg extensions. I'm 20 pounds on there. And these exclusively work the quadriceps. So if you want a good quad workout, I suggest these. And I actually do two sets of 15 with these. Forgot how to count, almost missed one. <laughs> And last but not least, I do pelvic raises off a bench. And I found this exercise from Women's Strength Training Anatomy. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was reading it from the viewfinder, so it was backwards and I had to decode the message there for a second. I got it from Value Village, it was $3. Sometimes it's just easier to pick up a book and be like, okay, this looks really good. I want to try this out. And it does go into good detail on what it's working out. It also breaks out sections by buttocks, legs, abdominals, and then there's back, which I need to spend some time trying a few more exercises. With this, I did go through it and I did quite a few of them. And right now this is the one that I settled on. I like this one the most so far. And this exercise works the gluteus maximus and hamstrings. It's also fairly easy to do. You don't have to have a workout bench. You could find anything that has a stable upper lift and you lay down flat on your back, palms down, and lift your pelvic bone. Also, I can feel the burn every time I do it. So two sets of 15. Palms down by your side. I like to get them at a comfortable feeling so that it feels that my hips and my legs are aligned. And up we go. Yeah, okay. Ooh. Yeah, I can feel the burn on that one. Uh, also, fun fact, Steven can't stop staring at my ass lately. And I think it's this exercise. All right, I am going to go get some water, do this all over again. I'll see you guys in a montage. Living in bubbles Too late They say I'm always too late But I'm just spending my time Doing what I feel like And if you
So normally this is the time you guys would see me cooking dinner. I am currently at 1,125 calories, 71 grams of protein, 71 grams of fat, and 54 grams of carbs. I'm really liking that number right now. I'm also really full. That was a very nutrient dense meal that I had for breakfast. As you can see from my macros, it had fiber, it had meat, it had dairy, berries, vegetables, all the stuff I would love to see in my breakfast every day, <laughs> but I am full. Liquor has calories in it. I've got roughly 275 left. Uh, 300 milliliters is about 300 calories-ish. I think it's I think it's 300 or 350, I'm not checking. It has been a week since my last drink. So I'm gonna go ahead and drink a little bit of this. I do believe it is a treat that I have earned, that I enjoy. And on today's menu, it is toasted caramel black velvet, Canadian whiskey blended. I'm gonna pair it with Diet Shasta cream soda. I think it tastes amazing. I was a huge sugar-free A&W girly. I, I, I love a cream soda, apparently. And it pairs well with whiskey. I got my chores done today. I got my exercises done. I shared a little bit about what I am doing as far as trying to build muscle. And I've stuck pretty close to my nutritional and caloric goals. So I'm feeling really good about today. Let me know in the comments if you guys are doing any exercises, any that you would suggest for me. Again, muscles are gonna help me in my elderly age. So, so I will take whatever advice you've got for me. And with that, I'll say goodbye and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.